and you don't stop, we are at Brook Park, a community garden here in the South Bronx where they teach young people about the environment, about environmental justice, and about working with the land to be able to feed ourselves. Let's go in the park, talk to some of the young kids that's here to do some work, and we'll put some work in also. We all inherently have a connection to nature, and I think the way Friends of Brook Park introduces everybody to the hands-on experience is, you know, first we talk, then we tour, then we taste things, they have fun with the chickens, they experience the bees, and they get open. So then when it comes to seeing that they're direct, they are directly impacting and benefiting their own community, and that's rewarding for everybody. It gave me a new outlook on nature. Like, I didn't think there would be so many beautiful things in the Bronx. Like, this is something new. Oh, I love picking tomatoes. Just trying to find actual tomatoes is amazing. I feel like having on hands-on experiments, it's basically getting a first-hand outlook, like perspective on the topic, you know? You can read about things and you can see movies about things, but you never really know it until you actually like, get down and actually get it. All the kids who say, I never ate vegetables before, tried kale, they tried uh, basil, they tried anise, all these different things that they have never even tasted or seen. So it's a really good experience for them. We always go for junk food and just to have, like try new organic things that's not like made in factories. It's new thing and it makes us want to try other things. Like, well not me because I don't like vegetables. But still, you know. Nah, when I heard about this field trip, I thought it was gonna be whack. But when I'm actually here, it was kind of cool, and fun, and I liked everything. We're doing it for the vine. Come back. Well, Brook Park is able to host over a thousand student visits a year, and especially Bronx students from local schools. And I think they had a wonderful time today. They were especially excited about tasting the fresh organic vegetables that we have, and I think everybody tasted something, including the Serrano hot peppers. And it's very important to address nature deficit disorder in our urban cities that leads to uh, a lot of the social ills because people don't have enough experience with the natural environment. This is an amazing experience for them because in science class, for example, we were teaching about decomposition and he was showing them the compost and talking about how there's worms in there and asking the kids, why are there worms? And everybody was just kind of like, oh, because they're breaking down the nutrients for the soil. So I think they can actually take what we're learning in class and seeing it in real world application. And in history class, they're learning about hunting and gathering and I think just seeing how things grow helps them really understand that things like that still happen today, even though it's a little bit different. Let's, let's check out this jacket though, you know what I mean? Because I think this is a big part of it too. You got, you know what I'm saying? Check out, you got the Bronze Boys, you got Puerto Rico, you know what I mean? Um, you got Trace, you know what I mean? That's some power. Show me the back, show me the back. You, you, got, you got the Black Power for Africa, you know what I mean? Support your local ghettos. The Bronze Boys rock. When people talk about cardboard, they're not really talking about B Boys, they're talking about poppers. B-boys that walk with cardboards, all right? Concrete. So you know the history. Don't forget, you know, I hear a lot of times people say, oh, cardboard. He was a B-boy, he was great there. And also B-boys. I kept my name Dollar Bill because B-boy really started from a boogie boy, not new breakers, okay? Just want to also play that fire out for history so that y'all know that you stole it, you can have it, and it's okay because we love each other. You know what I'm saying? It's a cultural boy. And that, that was Boogie Boy for like Bronx Boy? Or also. For, or for Boogie for like dance? For Bronx Boy, and also for Boogie Boy. Because before you was all um, breaking, you was rocking out. There was no breaking there. there. Was nobody spinning on their head and all that there. Everybody was up rocking and popping or prancing. You know what I'm saying? Or Boogaloo. You know what I'm saying? That, that's what was going on in the 70s and the early 80s and all like that. 82, 83, that's when you start getting people really start doing head spins and all that and everything. Like the Kudiyaki and everybody and all of us. I went to junior high school with them. You know what I'm saying? Used to hang with 45, where a gymnastic teacher named Mr. Turner, he showed us the film of Tommy Flynn, his gymnastic floor exercise. A lot of people don't want to admit it, but this is how a lot of us started getting into doing Tommy flares. Where you think the name come from? Doing flares and all like that. I'm just letting anybody know the history. 1979, a 
basketball teacher named Mr. Turner had a gymnastic program that he went around showing this film. And this is how a lot of us would get our windmills and our chocolate flares from that man. So everybody needs to pay homage to break the glass.